Hello and welcome to Auto's Inside Line Live. We are live on the England Rugby Facebook page and it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. We are broadcasting as we speak. This is happening right now because we are live on Facebook. We are here at Twickenham for the England-France game. It's the first game of the RBS Six Nations Tournament and we are so excited. England come into this undefeated. But this is a special day. This is the first time we've broadcast live from the O2 Blue Room. Prior to every England game here at Twickenham, O2 inflates a massive tent and we have a huge pre-game party. So come inside and say hello to everyone in the O2 Blue Room. We've got some very special guests who are going to come and join us throughout the day, before and after the game. The first guest we're going to welcome is an absolute beast of an athlete. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be chatting to Anthony Watson. So here I am with Anthony. We are in the changing room. This is the engine room. This is where it all happens. And I'll be honest with you, this is the first time I've been in a professional sports changing room prior to a massive event like England taking on France at the beginning of the RBS Six Nations. Anthony, I'm excited and I'm not even one of the players. So for you guys, when you walk in, just tell us what it's like. Because everyone's got the shirt, so all the gear is ready to go. Nervous? Yeah, there's a few nerves knocking around. Um, you know, it's obviously awesome to take in the atmosphere as you're walking outside. You know, you come through, you see all the trophies and stuff that's, that have been won in the past. And then you see your, your name here in your shirt with obviously your cap number and stuff. And it's, that's when you start getting excited to get out there. Um, you know, a few boys will, will take over as, as kickoff approaches. You know, Owen, George, you know, the leaders, Marrow, Dylan, obviously, will, will start talking as it gets closer to kickoff and, um, and then things ramp up from there. And what's Eddie like in the changing rooms? I mean, let's not give too much away because, you know, it is live on the internet and uh, they are watching. But what does Eddie say to the players prior to a game? How does he get you excited? Does he just say, do what we've been doing on the training ground? Yeah, it's very similar to how he's in training, really. You know, he has a few one-to-ones with players, just little, um, you know, little chats. Um, but more or less how he is in training, to be fair. He uh, scored. He hands over to, to the players close to kick off. And, Any other question gets you. He scored 12 There's a lot goes on behind the scenes. There's seconds. several fellas uh, mixing protein shakes over there and they put berries in there. Yeah, they're, you, no, you're all right, I'm talking about you, don't worry, don't worry, it's fine, it's all good, it's all good. And they were saying that uh, when they make the protein shakes, they make sure that they taste good because the guys just wouldn't eat them if they tasted rotten. Yeah, 100%, <laughs> mate. If it tastes nasty, I'm taking one sip and it's going down, 100%. Now, uh, after a game, let's say we've won, how is the atmosphere different before and after the game? Yeah, everyone's obviously um, you know, delighted that they've won and um, you know, there's a lot of laughter as everyone's reminiscing on the game and stuff like that. And, um, and you know, similar things to that, but I think you know, sort of an hour, two hours. Oh no! There you go. Oh no! There you go. Uh, let's just give it a whirl. Nah, no good tweets, mate. No good. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. It's supposed to be a drink, but that's actually a meal. <laughs> it's the only drink I've ever tried that you have to chew. <laughs> Horrible, uh, mate. Anthony, let's talk about the leg quickly. Yep. Uh, obviously, nothing majorly serious. Yeah, no, so just a, a little hamstring strain. So um, I hopefully I'll be back playing in, in a couple of weeks now. So, um, you know, I got off lightly, I guess. All right, good stuff. Two more of these, I'll be as big as Joe Marley. We'll <laughs> see you in the blue, blue room. And here he is, live from the O2 Blue Room, outside Twickenham Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Watson's with us. Yay! Yes. How are you feeling? Yeah, all good, thank you. It's good in here, isn't it? It is, it's nice. Everyone's it's really good. It, it, the thing that I like about the O2 Blue Room is the fact that there's an awesome atmosphere and rugby fans have to be, especially England rugby fans, have to be the best fans in the world. They are awesome, aren't they? And you must feel that as a player. You've got yeah. to keep them on side. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think um, that's what makes Twickenham so special is you know, how loud the England fans get, especially when they start swinging, singing Swing Low and stuff like that. It's, it's unbelievable as a player to, to have 80,000 cheering. Um, and as I said, that's what adds to the atmosphere. Not long now till kickoff. Just tell us what the England players will be doing. Will they be on the coach yet? Will they, will they be packing their bags, their, their, their lucky underpants, I guess, or favourite socks? What, how, what's going on? Just talk us through it. Yeah, I'm not sure if they'll be on the bus quite yet. They'll probably be having um, unit meetings, so the forwards will be together, the backs will be together, um, just chatting through, you know, first set pieces and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, everyone's different, I guess. You know, some boys will be laughing and joking right up till kickoff. Um, so Jonathan Joseph is one of those, one of those guys. Um, then a few other guys will be you know, listening to music very serious throughout. Um, you know, just be taking everything seriously. You don't want to crack a joke to any of those guys because you might get a, a little swing to the face or something. So, um, but yeah, you know, as I said, everyone's completely different. So, um, I know, guess over a period of time, you get to know everyone's personalities pre-game. Some people, some guys you can chat with, some guys you can interrupt. Other guys, they're just tunnel vision, ready for the game, waiting for the first contact. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think more, more people than not are relaxed, um, but there are a few who are, as you said, very tunnel vision and 100% concentrated on the game, which is, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. It's just how you prepare yourself for the game. So each their own, I guess. All right, well, we've got lots of questions from uh, viewers on our Facebook page. You can post your questions as well. And questions from within the Blue Room. And they're always good. And we, uh, we, we banned what's your favourite cheese. So we won't be asking that question. Rick from Blackburn says... Oh, they're in from Blackburn! Oh, give me six! What's the fastest you've run 100 metres in? I haven't actually done it since I was about 15 or 16. Um, and I ran 11.4, I think it was then. So, um, I don't know what I'd run it in now. I'd like to think I'd be able to run sub-11, but who knows? That's pretty good, though. Nick Peters. Where's Nick Peters? In the toilet. Who's faster, you or your brother Marcus? <laughs> I get asked this so much, mate. It's brutal. Um, see, I want to lie now and say I'm faster than him, but unfortunately, I think he'd beat me. Uh, we haven't actually had a race, but until then, I'll say we don't know, but I think he might beat me. Fair enough. All right, I get that. Ian from Twickenham. What football club do you support? I'm a gooner, mate. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened at Stamford Bridge, but last I checked, we were one 0 down. So. Things aren't looking great for us, but... Um, well, yeah. let, let's ask the Blue Room, what was the score at 2-0? At, uh, at 3-1. It was 3-1. All right, there you go. Sad day. Very Don't worry, sad day. at least we'll beat France today. All right? Thank you. Uh, do you like any other sports? I do. Um, I like a lot of American sports. I like American football. I like basketball. Um, and then, yeah, I watch football and obviously support Arsenal. So those are the, the main three, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Another question from the room. Owen Bezik in Hampshire. Oh! Two. Scotland have scored again. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, Scotland have scored again. Yeah. Owen Bezik from Hampshire. I thought you were all cheering. Owen. I thought, my God, Owen's very popular. But he, we mentioned his name at the same time that Scotland scored. Owen Bezik in Hampshire wants to know, who's the best, quickest winger you've played against? Um, I've played a lot, of, a lot of good wingers in my time, I guess. Um, you know, obviously my first start was against Brian Habana, who's obviously um, you know, a world-class winger. He's proven himself in, on every stage, really, so he's, he's probably got to be up there. But I think for myself, you know, as a, as a young player, the toughest player I played against was, was David Lemmy. Um, he's not the biggest or, the, or necessarily the strongest, but his ability to change direction and stuff like that um, had me all over the place when I was sort of 16, 17. So, um, yeah, I learned a lot from playing against him. Now, we get a lot of young rugby fans uh, watching these interviews that we do on Autry's Inside Line. How do you mark a player who you think is quicker than you? What, what do you do? Are there any techniques that you can use? Is there anything that you're taught at club level, at England level, or even at school level? What, what, what sticks with you? How do you mark someone quick with yeah, great feet? It's very tough. Um, you know, one of the keys is to try and shorten your foot stride down as you get closer to him. Um, but as you said, it is very difficult because if you overchase, it makes it easy for them to step back inside. Um, and if they're faster than you and you don't chase hard, then they're going to obviously take you on the outside and you're done. So the keys are really just to slow your foot stride down um, and try and stay square for as long as possible. OK. Louise Hiley. Where's Louise? Facebook. Oh, this is via Facebook. Thank you very much. Via Facebook. What song gets you pumped for the game? Um, what do you put on? What's in your headphones? <laughs> Amigos. I don't think a lot of people will know them, but it's, uh, it's, it's a rap group that I listen to quite a lot. Um, and they just released a new album, so when I get back playing, I'll be blasting that. All right. Is, who else likes hip hop in the room? Is there anyone who's got a weird taste in music in the in the change rooms? Do you ever think, wow? I mean, there must be. There's always a Phil Collins fan. Oh, J Jonathan Joseph loves that kind of stuff. Really? Um, anything Disney or or anything like that. I've caught him singing hang on, Frozen hang on, hang on. numerous so, times. So we're about to face France at Twickenham, and JJ right now is listening to the album for Beauty and the Beast. There's really? a good chance he's listening to Frozen, mate. Very good really? chance, yeah. Wow, you just threw him under a bus. <laughs> Fair enough, we've got another question. Uh, Favourite uh, way to relax before and after a game? We've talked about it before, let's talk after the game. What do you do? How do you relax? How do you chill out? Are you one for the ice bath? Um, I hate it. Sometimes they force us to get in there, but we've got this cryo chamber outside of Twickenham, so that's probably even worse. You've got to sit in that for about two and a half minutes, and it goes to minus minus 130 degrees um, which is it's awful mate and you're just there in, in your pants socks and a beanie and that's it so um, it's not great that's probably the worst thing about it um, but relaxing I guess I just like to chill out spend time with my family 
chat to the other players. Um, sometimes, you know, we have a few drinks at the bar, nothing too ridiculous, but okay. yeah, that's, that's probably it for me. I guess so, because you've just run, literally, you've got some. Like yeah, absolutely, field. yeah. Absolutely um, exactly, I, mean, a lot of, I think mentally as well, as physically, it is draining to, to play 80 minutes of international rugby. You've got to be completely focused throughout. Um, so, you know, you just want to unwind and do as, as little as possible that's taxing, I guess. So, um, for me, that's just chatting and, you know, having fun with my, my friends and family. OK, so let's talk about today's game. It's the first game of another big tournament. England are undefeated. Does that, that the burden of being undefeated, does it rest on, on the players' shoulders or Eddie's shoulders? Is there any talk of being undefeated? No, I don't think so. I think the only pressure is, is what we're really going to put on ourselves to perform. Um, you know, obviously we had a great Six Nations last year, but, you know, international rugby changes so quickly. We've got to be one step ahead of everyone else again this year, and, and that's what we'll be doing. Um, but, you know, we've said it in the media and stuff like that, but we're just going to take it each game as it comes. And, and today we've got a tough test against France, um, you know, which is obviously imperative to get the W today. Well, let's talk about France. Why are they so tough to play? I mean, they've got good players across the, across the park, really. Um, for me as a back, looking at their wingers, they've got two lightning fast wingers with, with great feet. Um, so, you know, marking them out of the game today is going to be hugely important. Um, and they've got a, a massively strong forward pack, as France always do. So I think for England today, it's, it's going to be key for us to, to try and tire them out. Um, and I think that we'll hopefully blow them away in the last 20 minutes. All right. Prediction? Uh, 28, 14. 28-14, all right. So I think Ireland have just scored against Scotland. That's what they're cheering for, not for uh, France and his prediction. But thank you very much for uh, joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Watson. Yes. And keep an eye on what we're going to be doing throughout the day on Inside Line. I think we're going to watch the England coach arrive. We're going to watch all the players arrive uh, through the tunnel. And we're going, to do, we're going to come back in here and we're going to interview three players after the game. So fingers crossed they'll be in a good mood because England will beat the French! Yay! We'll see you then. Join us after the game.